Uh, the Lord has just laid this upon my heart to share uh, for quite a long time. And uh, I thought that today is an appropriate day to share with you all. This is for children and for especially for parents. All of us uh, who are married, we have kids, some maybe know, but they have nephews and nieces, and you can share it with them. 2014 has been an exciting year for us. Ups and downs, we were in the valleys and we were top the mountains at times. But God brought a friend into my life uh, during this year. He came to share something with me and opened my eyes really wide. She told me this. She said, whatever happened yesterday, let it be gone and live from today onwards. In other words, how I integrate it as is, don't be imprisoned by your yesterdays. Move on. Whatever your kids have done, whatever your friends have done to you, whatever things that have made you sad and broken, leave it. Move on. God doesn't want us to hold on to yesterdays. He wants us to move on and to experience new measures of love in him, forgiveness and love. So this is my message to you. For parents especially, our kids have done some good things, some not so good things, some sad things. And I'm telling myself this as well. Forget about yesterday, today is here, move on. There are brighter days ahead for all of us. That's all. This, um, coming up here, this me the opportunity to share what uh, what God has done for me in my life. Um, as most of you should know, I've graduated this year, and um, I just want to share how God's favor has followed me through these five years. Um, though my memory is not very good in this kind of thing, but uh, my mom apparently has a better memory than me, has reminded me of all the little, little things, all, all the little, little miracles that God has done for me. So um, I just want to share something that has recently happened to me. One of the things is that um, I, by God's grace, I managed to publish um, a research article uh, in an international journal. Why I feel that this is a miracle to me is because uh, I've never expected myself to be under the DIS supervision and also, um, what more to say, publish an, uh, an article. Um, this is because the dean usually chooses three of the best students in my batch to be under him. And knowing myself, I am far, 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 far from being one of the best of the students uh, in my batch. So, to be able to be given this opportunity, I believe that this is God's favor for me. And another thing I want to share is that um, sometimes you don't realize how prayer, how powerful prayer is uh, to us. Actually, um, there was once when when we, me and my friends, had to study for exams, and suddenly the electricity went off. That night, I could literally hear people screaming and shouting and panicking uh, uh, at the hostel. And there was nothing that we, we could really do but just to continue studying. And, we, and it was very frustrating for us. Uh. So I actually decided to send a message to my mom asking her to pray for us. And soon after that, the electricity went back and I, I told my, my friends about this uh, they are not Christians by me and they told me uh, why didn't you send the message earlier so that we can you know, don't have to waste a lot of time to study so when I, I actually managed to talk to my mom she actually said when she finished praying right after she finished praying she received the, she received the text from me saying that the electricity came back. So I believe that this is not a coincidence from, uh, from God, and this is from God, and I hope that this testimony uh, can encourage all of you that 
If we stay faithful to him, he will forever stay faithful to us. Yeah, that's all from now. Good morning, everybody. Um, okay. right, uh, I have been a Christian for many years, and there are times that we don't, we don't uh, um, believe what we um, what we believe in. We don't believe. We just, you know, are believers just like that. But uh, I believe that if we practice what we learn from the Bible, if we are obedient to the Lord, um, we will be healed or we will be, uh, the, the prayer will be answered. One of the things that, there are two things I would like to share with regards to healing, God's healing power. I've always uh, wondered why people, Christians especially, um, when there are sickness, there are so much, I mean, that, that, those were during the younger, younger times of my Christian life. I was wondering why Christians so so fast to reaching out to uh, medicines and so on. Christians, you know, we have God who heals. So my my um, testimony is about two healings I've experienced. Not just me, but uh, one of our my husband's grand grandparents. There are so many healings that God has done so much into my family life. Even little healings like when the children are down with fever, um, flu, cough. Simple healings like that, we don't really need to reach out to the tablets and panadols and things like that. Because I would like to practice what the Lord had promised us in the Bible, that God actually can heal. Yes, we believe that it's God's timing to heal, and sometimes He doesn't heal. It's okay. We have an open heart that know that the Lord has His own will. So uh, these two testimony, one is about, okay, I start with uh, my husband's grandmother. She, she actually was dying on the bed, bed ridden. The doctor also had uh, said that she had no hope. So the one of the doctors actually asked all the family members to come back. And uh, we we are quite close to them, so we went to visit them. And I, every time we visit people in the hospital, I don't feel nice if I don't leave with a prayer. So I told my husband that I'd like to pray for her. But I told him that I don't know what to pray because I don't know how to pray even though I wanted to pray for her, because she is dying. When people are dying, you, you don't know how to pray sometimes. Are you going to pray that Lord, please heal her? Or how, you know? But I just, you know, I just lay my hands upon her, and I just pray that, Lord, if it's your will, please heal her, please strengthen her. Actually, a lot of family members come because they thought it's the end of her life. But I really praise God. She is alive. She didn't die, you know. She's alive and now she's well and walk around. She's a grandparent, quite old. I don't know, I asked my husband how old is she. But it's amazing that sometimes we, we put in our head that this person is dying, this person is dying. You know, there is no hope because the doctor says so. But why not we Christians, if we really want our loved ones to be well and alive, why not we pray for healing always for them? But if it is God's will that it is not that the person that we pray for is not well, then we just say that Lord, thank you for you have taken her to be with you. Something like that. That's what I learned for this year. Another healing that I have uh, experienced this year for myself is this. We had a prayer rally recently held by our church. Um, I was um, like like I said, I've always been believing that God has will heal me and I believe in the, the gifted people that can pray for healing. So uh, I had I have few few months back I had prolonged bleeding. And I always remember I always pray for myself because I don't reach out for medicines very easily. Okay, I always lay hands on myself and so to my children and my husband I pray for them. Um, I pray for myself but I, I just leave it to the Lord to heal me. And when the prayer rally is on, I tell myself and I tell my children, let's go. Let's go and to be prayed for. Whatever sickness that you have, you just come and let the pastor pray for you. So I go for myself as well because I have prolonged reading the past few months. Because of maybe because I'm reaching 
uh, menopause or what, I, I'm not sure. But yeah, the doctors, I went to see the doctor, but the doctor said maybe it's a symptom. Yeah, I'm, I, 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 I'm quite sad, but then it's okay, all right? But then I still believe that God can heal me. So I pray, plus I take the doctor's medicine. Then I don't know how to check whether or not God will heal me because I'm taking medicines. So one day, I went to see the doctor. The doctor ran out of the pills. I know it's not my will, I know it's God's way. And uh, I asked the doctor, when, where can I get those pills? Because I'm half hearted to take the pills or not because I would like to see God's healing because I have been prayed for by the pastor that, that evening. So, um, okay, the, the doctor said to me, this is a congregation of Gaida, she said to me, you cannot buy the pills outside. You can buy from us, order from us. So, um, yeah, I go to the prescription center, I mean, uh, at the counter there, congregation, and lo and behold, they're running out of the tablets. So, okay, all right, okay, no more tablets. So I went, you know, I'm still half after I went to, to the, um, um, what's that, pharmacy to look for the tablet. I couldn't find. So I tell myself, okay, I'm going to check where the God has healed me. You know, I'm not going to buy any tablets and I'm just going to continue to pray. Months, two months later, I have come back to my normal, you know, ladies. <laughs> monthly. So it's no longer a prolonged reading for me. I'm not ashamed to share with this. I'm an adult and not old. I, 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 I thank God for his healing and I thank God for, because this is the opportunity that you are half hearted it's not that you don't want to believe. You're half hearted to take the tablet or not. It's not that I don't believe in doctors. I, I do I believe that doctors are gifts from God. But as Christians, what is our reaction for to the sickness that we, we have? Like for example, flu, fever, cough, sore throat. My son is having sore throat. I will continue to pray for him, every one of them. If they have any sickness, I just tell them, pray first. Let us pray and see. And if the Lord leads us to the doctor, we go. If we take medicine, we take, but we must remember that the first person to reach out is the Lord. So I have experienced healing myself and I thank God because He stopped all the uh, selling of the medicine everywhere. And I, I can test that the Lord is good. Thank you. Uh, my, sorry, I'm very emotional when I hear people's testimonies. Very touching. Uh, and I also want to share. <laughs> she asked me why I cried. <laughs> Are you having flu? She said, no, I cried. <laughs> um, I want to share the art from um, her. She's my student. And because um, she said she's very shy, and even I like, threw her out this now. Uh, actually, uh, there is no coincidence, as my daughter said, there is no coincidence at all. Even for her to come to church today is a miracle. Because what I shared to you today, because uh, she told me a uh, few days ago, she messaged me. She said, Actually, I, I get a little bit. She messaged to me, she said, I miss church so much. I want to go to church, but I cannot go because uh, it's very busy, especially a uh, few weeks, there's a lot of functions. She's working in a restaurant, Boulevard restaurant. And, um, and then, uh, then that evening, the 24th evening, she uh, she messaged to me, she said, mm -hmm. Teacher, I can go to church tomorrow. Then um, then I, I actually, I didn't open the message until the next day she come to my house taking take a bus and walk all around uh, my area to look for my house. So, so she came to my house on the 25th. Uh, afternoon about 2 o'clock and she shared with me what happened, why she can come to church that 24th morning. Uh, she said to me, uh, I can come to church because uh, the restaurant uh, gas leak. Gas leak. <laughs> so she said, uh, there is no tin sound in the morning. <laughs> so she can come to church. So it is a miracle. And today she can come to church also uh, because uh, the gas leak it's still not in bed. <laughs> yeah, so she, her wish has been granted because she wanted to come to church so much. And the other thing is uh, that on the 24th uh, afternoon, she came to my house. Actually, uh, her handphone has been 
has dropped onto the water, you see, so she cannot, uh, cannot reach me. So she took a bus and she was looking around for my house, but she managed to find the, uh, my house. And uh, just nice that time we were in. Actually, we wanted to go to Raphael's house uh, uh, to visit them after everything we had packed up, after all our guests has uh, gone back. Uh, we cleaned up and we wanted to go to Raphael's house. But we were in at that time and she, she took a bus, she came to our house, she managed to find a house and she came and we had a, a good uh, talk and she has lunch with us. And then after that, um, we, uh, we went to Raphael's house. When we were in Rafa's house, we, we got a call from a contractor. If, if, if you know that it's Mr. Tien. Actually, we have, uh, myself and Pastor have discussed with Mr. Tien how we can help her, uh, how we can help her uh, with her house condition. She's uh, living in the Scottish area, uh, Scottish house. So um, then, then uh, he, uh, this uh, Mr. Tien called us and said, Ah, I'm free at this time. Uh, can we go and see the house? I was so shocked. And these two girls, she and her sister, was with me. And actually, all this uh, few weeks, she couldn't, she couldn't come to church. She couldn't come up because she was busy. She has to work. And and then the two of them was with me. Uh, so we said, okay, good. Just nice. The two of them was with me. So uh, we went to uh, we uh, we we went. We brought uh, Mr. Tien uh, to her house. And then after that, we see the condition. We discussed about it. And it was so surprised because she said. Uh, because before that, before uh, we, I was talking with Pastor that uh, we need to uh, talk to the father. We cannot just go in and help them, but we need to talk to the father whether he allow us to help him or not. So, uh, and she said, my father is always not in. He only come back at 11 o'clock. But that, when we went uh, to the house, we were so surprised. Uh, his car was there, his, he has an old car, his car was there. He said, oh, my father is in. So it is another... I, I think it's not a coincidence at all. That time she was not working, she was with us, and Mr. Tien was free. And when we reached there, the father was in. So we have a good talk, and uh, he, he was happy that we, we, uh, we allowed, uh, he allowed us to help him. So this is, uh, I testify again that God uh, uh, plans and leads, and there is no coincidence. That's the problem. Uh, Mark 5.19 says, Go to your home and say uh, the blessing of the Lord upon you and His mercy upon you. I want to sum up the blessing of uh, the good Lord upon me with a song. Can I use your guitar? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is a commercial track. <laughs> Sometimes we take things for granted. Um, I want to thank the Lord for the roof <coughs> above my head, the food on the tables, the shoes on my feet, the family, the fine family that I have. Oh, I'm not good. 
such a blessing. You know, out of my failures, God has brought His glory, and out of my brokenness and everything, God has shown how faithful He is to me all the time. And um, when I came back, um, my mom told me I have to my license, and then I was like, another exam. And I hate exams when you have to have a certain amount of cups, okay? And then I have to do my favorite cups. <laughs> And then, and then I had to do my table test, and then, um, and then I was like, I'm going to fail again. And I did fail the first time. And then second time, I, I, I sat for it, and then I didn't want to click, okay, this, you click, okay, the, 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 the result comes straight away. And then, I, and then I'm like, you know what, God, whatever, I'll let your will be done. And I click, okay, and I passed, and I was like, thank you, Jesus. And then, but I just want to encourage everyone, you know, if you fail, God always has to everything. He doesn't, he shuts the door for a reason and whatever it is, during your sad moments, during your happy moments, always give glory to God because he sees you and he's promising about us that I will be there in the darkest valley of your life. So yeah, that's all. Thank you. Good morning, Chish. Good morning. I just want to take this opportunity to thank you, um, all of you, for your prayers and also a message of confidence uh, over my father. As of uh, December 20th, this month, that was last Saturday, I had a new status. I became an orphan. Which means uh, my mother already passed away almost 20 years ago, and my father just passed away. So I have a new status, orphans, and I will sympathize with all the orphans who are here with me. So this year has been a very trying time because my father um, has been sick since, has been not been well since August, and um, and at that time we were planning for my son's wedding, so it was a, a, a very um, emotional time for me especially because I was very close to my father, and he was in Kuchi. But I want to praise uh, God for the life of my father, and a little bit I want to make for my father and also. Also to share with you is uh, my father's faithfulness to God. And actually my, my father is not all so good, okay? In his younger days, he had all the vices. He was a smoker, he was a drinker, and he was a gambler. But he wasn't a woman, I said, thank God. Right? He was faithful to my, my wife, to uh, his wife. <laughs> I'm still emotionally, you know, a gem out there. But in his 40s, he stopped all these vices. It was a miracle. I didn't know that he had this good power, but he did. So it is a lesson to us that if we have the will, and he wasn't a believer then, he became. But then he became a believer. And my father had hearing from me even since he was young. But after I became a believer, he was always reading the scripture, reading the newspaper, and he was always writing copy verses in this big A4 student notebook. And was covered from page to page with fine writing, either articles from the newspaper or with Bible verses. And, and that day I only discovered that he was also an artist. There were books that he had drawn very beautiful character. And that's where my, I suppose my younger sister and brother inherited the you know, uh, artistic talent. I, I always wonder, when, how come it becomes so artistic? So now I knew. And I want to leave this behind that my father always lived on this spiritual principle. That is from Philippians 4 verse 6. Do not be anxious, but in everything commit to God. I know we are also anxious, we've been praying about the blood, praying about you know, everything. But uh, I would like to pass on this uh, scripture truth that my father has always lived on Philippians 4 6. And I could tell that my father is a type that always Jim doesn't have a care in the world. You know, I think he left all the care to my mother, because when my mother went this. <laughs> so it's a type that he was always uh, very easy going. I've never seen him lose his temper except once in his life. And I would say that always live a, a, a life that God has always provided very richly for him right to the end. And I was so glad that uh, I was there to see, to hold his hand and sing take his last breath. So praise God and thank you for all your praise 
Thank you for your beautiful way. And thank you for your life. Actually, I didn't plan to share it, but then the voice in me just keep asking me to share it because it's his, it all glory goes to him. I know I'm going to cry, but I'm not going to cry. Um, so like our church, we have, um, we have a camp, which is Leaders Advanced Camp. Um, and it goes for three days. And my prayer for that camp was, I will, um, I want to experience God's, God's presence. So like, I fast with joy and fulfill my friends. And we fasted and we prayed for like two weeks. And then after that camp, nothing happened. But then, <laughs> I'm sorry. But then the last day, the last day, um, so my prayer was, I want to experience your presence. So like the last day, I really experienced his presence. Um, so like I, I can't walk. I I can't. I just couldn't stay up for like three or four hours. His love just, um, his love just flows like for an hour. <laughs> his love just, just pour out and like, I can feel that he's bringing his love for me when I was on the floor. And he was like, I love you and all that. And so like, my friend, so my friend, one of them is Josh. He came, um, yeah, he came last couple of weeks. So like, he has a vision of me. Um, he has a vision of me of um, God's hand. Like, I'm like at the center of God's hand. And my and another friend of mine, she has a vision of God's hand on me. Like God's hand covering my body. So. So after that, we um, went home and I didn't really sleep that night because I, I just want to spend time with God. So like, um, this verse came to me in Exodus um, chapter 33. Moses prayed, now show me your glory. And verse 21 says that, then the Lord said, there is a place near me where you may stand on a rock. When my glory passes by, I will put you in a crab in the rock and cover you with my hand until I have passed by. So, so like, yeah, I just felt like God, God is so strong. And at first, my, my friend thought I was there when even for this because, <laughs> uh, because I can I can't move I can move but I'm so big like she gave me a cup of water and I couldn't even hold that cup like it just <coughs> it just dropped so like she prayed for me saying that oh it was spirit leave her body but 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 then I was so like that moment when I doubt whether it's from God or from other stuff. Um, God so loudly that he, that he told me that um, do not fear. It was from me. And Joy came and he and she hugged me and she and she told us that she can really feel God's presence so strong when I hugged her. And then my friend brought me to a room and just prayed for me. And yeah, that's how she got the vision. So, yeah, God answered my prayers, so be careful, be careful what you pray for. <laughs> Thank you. First and foremost, I'd like to apologize if I don't articulate myself well, because I didn't come up preparing a speech or anything, which I usually do. 
for our public speaking. So, but I just felt really moved to share about this. And first of all, if some of you might not know me, I'm Jiao, and I'm Uncle Chiao's son. <laughs> I, actually, I came to this church a really long time ago. I can't really remember the year, but this was my first church. And then my dad got posted to the States, so I moved along with it. And I've been staying in the States for almost 13 years. And last Christmas, I think around January, I was kind of at a crossroads. And I apologize if I uh, tear up a little bit. But I was at a crossroads where you know, I had to decide if I'm going to come back here or stay in the States. And it was a really tough decision because there's one side where my relatives and my parents would encourage me to come home. And then there's another side. And I'm sorry, sorry I haven't shared this with you, Mom, but like my girlfriend, my friends, would try to keep me staying in America. So uh, it was really tough pushing at my sister too, both ways. So it was really tough just having two sides, listening to two sides. But at the end of the day, you know, I prayed about it. And I, I actually fasted about it, which that was probably one of the first time I fasted. So, but long story short, I came back and there was, I mean, it wasn't a, it was a tough choice coming back. I mean, staying in America for almost 13 years, so it was definitely a tough choice. And there was a lot of little worries. I thought, you know, I cannot adapt back, even the language, the weather, just like all these little stuff that would make me so worried. But then, long story short, you know, God is faithful. Um, you know, like just the little stuff that he, you know, he makes you like you're worried about the answer. I have so many stories. If you want to talk to me afterwards, that's cool. About how God has been faithful. But I just want to encourage some of you here. I know, you know, they, you guys might get a crossroads or something. And just, you know, dare to take the first step. I remember one of the first sermons I heard when I came back here was the pastor from Vietnam saying, dare to take the first step off the boat. And so if you if you trust God and He will write your ways and He will guide you each step of the way and just be faithful, pray about it, and I can tell you it'll take you places you never even dreamed of. So uh, I give God all the glory and a lot of people always say, you know, at work they say, you know, I'm you're lucky to be where you're at and I say, It's not luck, it's I'm blessed because I'm not a great God. So I give God all the glory and praise. Thank you. Uh, yeah. I'm not sure how many of you uh, know me, but I fell in the category of visitors. The uh, pastor said that uh, not today, this morning, uh, members and visitors can check. Right? So I'd like to uh, bring back my memory back to uh, 2005. In fact, I started attending the church uh, in 2005 to 2006, two years. So I think some of you may, may, may know me. We are not so. The reason why I was here uh, two years ago, I mean, for that two years, was because uh, I pursued my, uh, my study in Curtin. This way, I started with attending the church for two years. And after that, I left uh, Miri and went back to, to coaching to continue my work. And I'm working in this NCB. I think you all know NCB. And, uh, yeah. So I'd like to I stand here to testify uh, about God's goodness. For the two years I was here, I was very well taken, off, taken care of by uh, Pastor Lim and also family members, uh, Franco, and I had good fellowship with other, uh, other members of the church, so which I'm very thankful for. Pastor Lim, uh, just to share about him because I know him, uh, and when I think about him, unless the, 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 three, uh, the three letters come to me, you know? I want to share my family, the TLC, I think you all know the, the most familiar TLC. Tender living care. I think he's a very good example of a pastor who really had that heart to, 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 to encourage and uh, to bring up people you know, uh, in, in various churches they are. So he really had, uh, had this heart you know, uh, to, to so tenderly care and love uh, for everyone. For me and my family, uh, you know, we, we are very blessed uh, to be pastor uh, to be. You know, to helping me through uh, for, the, for the two years I was here from 2005 to 2006. Thank you, uh, thank you very much, Pastor and family. And now may God bless you uh, and continue.
continue to uh, use you to talk for the further of this uh, kingdom uh, in, in here and beyond, right? And Franco and, uh, and uh, uh, Joy, right? Joyce, right? Yeah, thank you very much uh, for, for, the, for the, the two years I was here. We have great fellowships. And recently, I, I came back this time. The reason because I brought my family to be here for one week Christmas uh, holiday here. So again, I uh, think our relationship with him back. I visited Franco and the family. And we are very encouraged as a family to know them. And my, my girls and my family know them now. And we are very encouraged. Especially, I think there are many things that we can learn from this family. Uh, the passion, the love for students. So this is something that I think I'll bring back to my church in, uh, in uh, BMKEC. It's Borneo Event Commission, Kuching Medical Church uh, in Kuching. So I told them, I wish uh, this is something that we can learn. I wish uh, there are families that in our church that have you know, this passion that we use by God to reach out to students. So, give up, Franco, and Joy, right? Joy, I uh, mean, for, for a good job. So I'm very encouraged. And, yeah, lastly, okay? <laughs> So this, some, this, this is a verse that I'd like to leave with you, which uh, I could share this when before I left this church before, I mean, 2006, but no, uh, I mean, I did not. Nah. So anyway, uh, I'll make it up today. So this verse is a student of us here at the age of 42, you can imagine, and going through two years of uh, engineering studies, it was tough. But this is a verse that, you know, that really uh, keep me up every time I pass exam, every time I was, uh, you know, Kind of challenge. So okay, may there many students here. So I, I can encourage you with this verse. This is from Psalm chapter 22, verse 7, right? The family verse. Some trust in chariot and some in horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord of God. Amen. So I can tell you that uh, no, this church, I mean this verse is still relevant to me until today. This time I face a challenge. Uh, I always trust the name of the Lord. Not only during my exam time as student. But I'm right now as a, as a working professional with SCB. So, again, thank you very much for everyone. And Pastor Brento, thank you. All good things do not need to come to an end. We can continue to share that you know, even after this. But I just want to recap what we have been shared uh, in some ways. When God, we hear the testimony that God is powerful, God is faithful. I mean, I've been saying it, uh, we've been sharing this, but you hear the personal testimonies make a whole lot of difference. Uh, Joyce reminded us that God will take care uh, not only of our yesterdays, but will also take care of our tomorrows. Don't be locked in by your yesterdays. We have learned about the power of prayer. When you talk to God, even in simple language, an expression of your heart, God hears your prayer. Yeah? So don't take prayer lightly. Yeah? We've heard about the value of seeking God uh, in fasting and prayer. When you are at a crossroads, when you do not know where to turn, turn to God. Yeah? And trust God. Be, uh, be willing to take the step forward of okay? <coughs> We see that God honors those whose hearts are for Him. And we hear from Mimi's testimony, her desire is to be in a place in the house of God, you know, on a Sunday to worship the Lord. And God, you know, there are maybe a lot of people that didn't have a dim sum, yeah, on that Christmas morning, yeah, but uh, God grants her the desires of heart. God will move mountains in order that He will meet your desires and your needs. Amen? So this is how God, great God is. Uh, how great God is. Be thankful uh, through the song that Brother Robert has reminded us. Don't take the Lord for granted. His blessings for granted. Yeah. I thank the Lord for you know, revealing Himself to people, uh, to joy, to Vivian. I think the prayer that Lord, that we may experience your glory. Let it be our prayer also. And we'll close this year you know, with joy, 
with thankfulness, but also experiencing the glory of God. We need more and more of that day by day. In this day and age, when darkness comes in, it can so easily cloud out the glory of God. Let this be our prayer that we too will experience the glory of God. Seek God with all your heart. Amen? Amen. Shall we rise together? Sing the last song. Give me another 30 more minutes. I'm going to feel the shame. No, okay. The reason why I chose this song, not like any other songs, but again, again.